Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And today we are talking about a ship that came out a couple of years ago. And like quite a few others, we're pretty much immediately forgotten about within, I'd say, shoot, a couple of weeks, if not a month, maybe, if that. And we've talked about a few of these ships on the channel in the past, but unlike quite a few of those ships, this ship is actually quite good. And I'm genuinely surprised that we don't see more of it. And that is, of course, the ship you are seeing on screen right now, the Tier 7 Premium Japanese battleship, the Hyuga. Now, the Hyuga is a very, very interesting ship, in my opinion. One of the main reasons is that we do have her sister ship in game, the Issei. Now, the Issei is, of course, the carrier conversion that we got. And the Hyuga is the proper Issei class battleship. This is how they were with their, with all of her 12 356mm guns intact. Now, the Hyuga is, of course, at Tier 7. And Tier 7 right now is a pretty nice spot to be in in most cases. Why? Well, because Tier 7 is kind of getting a break from matchmaking at the moment because we have super ships now. Tier 9 ships are being pulled up into Super Ship and Tier 10 games. Whereas Tier 7 used to be being pulled up into Tier 9 and Tier 8 games all the time. From my experiences now, Tier 7's... It still gets double up to, don't get me wrong. In fact, when I was playing a couple of games to get some background footage for this video, I got double up tiered. I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm going to show that one or the match while I was top tier at tier 7 yet, but uh, I guess you guys will find out whatever game I decided to go with. But anyway, so tier 7 gets a little bit of a break now, and will find itself mid-tier or top tier more often than being in a tier 9 game, at least from my experience. So you have that going for you right there by it just being a tier 7 ship. But of course that can be said about any tier 7 ship in the game. So what sets the Yuga apart from the other tier 7 ships? Well, first off, she's a Japanese premium battleship that's actually pretty good. A lot of the Japanese premium ships for a very long time weren't that uh, that great. But this is most definitely a, a good one in my opinion. Why? Well, from my experience with her, her 12 356mm guns are actually quite consistent in most cases. Now, of course, it is still a tier 7 battleship, right? Don't go into a game with a Hyuga expecting tier 9 battleship dispersion. But by tier 7 battleship standards, it's pretty darn good, especially for the sheer amount of guns that you get with the Hyuga. I'm not talking about, again, like laser-guided shells or anything like that. But you do have a pretty solid feeling of, wh of where these shells are going to go once you get a couple of rounds in her. It's kind of like, yeah, the ship's sailing in this direction. If I fire right around here, give him this much lead, most of my shells will impact the side of the ship and I'll get a decent bit of damage. Rather than, oh, I, I know where I need to shoot at to knock out like his rudder or his torpedoes or anything like that, especially at range. But again, with 12 guns, it's pretty darn consistent. Now, the main feature, or actually the main gimmick of the Hugo is, of course, her reload boost that you might notice sitting there in the corner on the toolbar. And yes, it does get a reload booster, which is, yeah, that's a thing. So you can imagine a battleship with a reload booster with 12 guns. The possibility that these there are quite high. And again, these are 356mm guns, so they are smaller guns for the tier, but that reload booster allows you to kind of make up for that in a couple of ways. Of course, the main way is that there's a ship selling broadside onto me, I got one salvo out, let me hit the reload booster and get another salvo as fast as possible in order to, you know, get as many shells as I can while this guy's selling broadside to me. That's, of course probably the best way to make use of it, especially if you're in like a brawling situation uh, when you're closer in and you can throw a salvo into his turrets to try and knock out his turrets, then get another one queued up pretty fastly with the reload booster so when you do the drive-by, you can blast them. So it's great for that, of course. 
But you got to remember, you are a ship with 356, 356 millimeter guns, which even by tier 7 battleship standards is on the smaller side. So you are going to be firing a fair amount of HE with the Hugo. Now she does have a 29 second reload on those main battery guns, so even without the reload booster, that's a pretty darn good reload for having 12 guns. But now that you have that reload booster, what this allows you to do is, when you have ships that are going bow into you, you can of course throw HE in their face. And again, with 12 guns, you're probably going to be setting quite a few fires. So, when they put those fires out, and they use their damage con, and you wait for the damage con to come off cooldown, if you don't know how you do that, you just look at the ship, and when those flashy lights go away, or when you stop getting damage from the fires that you set, the fires are out. So, once that damage con's done, hit another round of HE on them, pop the reload booster, get another salvo of HE on them, and with 12 guns and the fire chance that she does have, which if you are wondering what that is, with her HE shells, she has a 25% fire chance with 12 guns. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's pretty good. So, this also leads to her performing well when she does get double up tiered. Because you have those 12 guns to fall back on with those 25% fire chances per shell. And that's a real sticking point for a lot of battleships when they do get up tiered. They typically, of course, the caliber when it comes to a, a battleship's gun, well, the size of the shell, is a huge factor. If you don't have big enough guns when you get double up tiered, you're kind of screwed in a battleship. But with the Huga, with her good HE, the good base reload time of 29 seconds, and the reload booster, she can really hang in there when she does get a double up tiered. But when she's mid tier or top tier, of course, that's a much, much better uh, situation as you can imagine. So, and that's just talking about the guns too. So. The, the bottom line is the guns on this ship are really solid and really consistent, again, from my experience. The ship itself is on the slower side at 26 knots. Of course, you got to pay off for having 12 guns on the ship somewhere. And the armor isn't exactly strong by any stretch of the imagination. It is a bit of a chunky boat. Not quite as chunky as some other Japanese battleships around this tier. But, of course, there's a lot of ship there to shoot. And, more often than not... The shells are going to hit. Now, of course, if you have adrenaline rush, this gets your 29 second base reload time down even faster. So, of course, there's that double edged sword there. And the way the ship is played is really from mid to longer ish tier. It is very much a Japanese battleship in the Japanese battleship style. So, if you're playing at those mid to long ish ranges, like again, Japanese battleships are meant to, you're typically not having a, a horrible time in the Hugo. Now, you also get. Uh, fighter plane on top of the reload booster and you get the standard uh, heal so pretty nice set of consumables there I wish it would have had a fighter because then that would have really helped push it out when it comes to of course getting double up tiered but all in all this ship is really really solid for tier 7 and in my own opinion I would say it's actually pretty darn good and being a tier 7 battleship and a premium ship at that too when you do get double up tiered, you are making quite a bit of money. Because remember, when you are double up tiered and you're doing damage to ships of a higher tier than you, you are getting a buff to your economy. You're earning more credits and more XP. And then add on top of that, this is a premium ship. And if you run like, of course, a premium account or any boosters, it's a pretty good little money maker at tier 7. Especially when it comes to, again, getting double up tier to tier 9. You just find a tier 9 battleship, keep throwing HG in the man's face, keep setting fires, and just farming him for all that he's worth. You're going to have a tidy bit of credits at the end of the day with the Hugo. Now, uh, her weaker points is, of course, it's Japanese AA. Japanese AA doesn't really do much unless you're a Yodo or one of the uh, Harugumo line destroyers. Uh, other than that, it's just kind of more of a suggestion, and you're kind, you're, you're just kind of kindly asking the planes to go away rather than telling them to die. So there is very much that. And again, like I said, it's slow. It's not the 
the exactly a, a, a record setter, if you will. And that's what got me in uh, again, depending upon what game you're going to watch, probably the the tier seven game. This what got me because like I couldn't get back to the cap in, uh, in enough time to actually do anything. So besides that, again, it's a great premium and it's a tier seven. So it's it's not that expensive at all. You know, you're not going to be paying 77 bucks like you would for a tier eight ship or 52 bucks for a I'm sorry, uh, 77 bucks for a tier nine ship or 52 bucks for a tier eight ship. You know, I think typically it's tier sevens are like 35 ish dollars, which don't get me wrong. That's still a lot of money for a pixel item. But if you're looking for a Japanese premium battleship or just a really solid tier seven premium battleship, the Hugo is one I would definitely, of course, suggest. So, yeah, if, if you don't mind having the smaller guns where you get the more consistent performance with the accuracy rather than having to rely on overmatching your opponents and you can catch some fool's broadside, it's, it's a really great ship and one that I'm really surprised I don't see more of in-game. And of course, too, if I have to mention it, it's a great kiter if you are on a flank and it falls, you can run away pretty well. Again, it still goes 26 knots, it's not dead slow but you can still make stuff happen at that and just be throwing hc in the faces of the ships that are trying to engage you oh another thing i forgot to mention too is that that reload boost is really helpful when it comes to dds because a lot of times battleships they might get a pretty ro good role in a dd but very rarely will they act absolutely you know like delete a dd with a single salvo with that reload booster you can have that second salvo up and ready before the dd even has time to drop off detection and if they try to torpedo rush you they get too close to you, it's great for dealing with that. I, I should have mentioned that earlier, but it just came back to me right here. But yeah, Huga is a ship I would highly recommend if you have a coupon to get um, a discount on Bloom ships. It is certainly a ship that I would say is worth uh, investing into. It's 9,800 dubs on North America right now, so you have the Bloom coupon. Yeah, it's probably one of the tier sevens I would definitely recommend. Pro probably like third on my on my list. If you went for my tier seven ships, I would say definitely get the Duke of York. Then probably like the Shorn Horse if you like kind of playing a on a, a gear at tier seven, and then the Hugo. But if the Shorn Horse doesn't inter in interest you at all, I would say definitely like Duke of York, Hugo, and then maybe Hood after that. Hood's got. I have a love-hate relationship with Hood, as the uh, the video mentioned however long ago it was since I made that, that video on the Hood. But yeah, that's my two cents of the Huga guys. A, a great premium at a great cost that, again, got the, the Bloom coupon. I would say, yeah, go for it if you're interested in a Tier 7 Japanese battleship. So guys, let me know what you guys think about the Huga in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I want to wait to 75,000 subscribers here, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.